Welcome back, my friends. It's your boy, Toasty! Today we have another very special episode for you. It's good to have you back. If you happen to be new here, please hit follow or subscribe wherever you listen or watch the podcast. It greatly helps us out, and we'd love to keep bringing you stellar content. With that out of the way, for today's particular special, we have somebody from the Mortal Kombat 2021 film, that being the spectacular Max Huang. Max played the Shaolin monk Kung Lao. This was one of the characters in the movie that was easily presented most authentically. Max has a huge past in the world of martial arts and has been very blessed with an impressive resume. It's an absolute treat to have him on the show today, and I'm very eager to start asking some questions. So how about we get straight to it? And here we are, combatants. I am now joined by the ever-so-talented Max Hong member of Jackie Chan's stunt team and wielder of the razor-rimmed hat. I'd like to start off by saying thank you so much for joining today's episode. Thank you, Marcus. What a nice introduction. <laughs> uh, so to kick... Yeah, man, it's great. So to kick things off, why don't you tell us a little about your martial arts background, which styles you specialize in, and uh, how you ultimately received the role of Kung Lao in the 2021 film. Okay. Um, yeah, it basically all started when I was a kid. Uh, I think when I was three years old, my father introduced me to Bruce Lee films, Jackie Chan films. And um, I remember clearly like watching those movies. I got so excited right away. And I felt like it was a kind of connection that I built up with these films. And um, from there, my interest in martial arts started. So the movies kind Thanks. of brought me to the martial arts. And, you know, I asked my family, like, um, my parents, please send me to a martial arts school. Um, I'm from Germany, so um, I live in Nuremberg, which is not the biggest city. And so at that time, there weren't many martial arts schools. But there was a Wing Chun school, apparently, which um, mm. I then joined. Uh, unfortunately, they closed after a year, so I had to um, look for something else. And I found a Malaysian wow. Kung Fu school um, where I trained for about five years, I think. And we did a okay. lot of, yeah, we did a lot of um, full contact sparring. We went to competitions in Europe, in Germany. And, you know, I, I was always excited about competing. I thought that would in a way, bring out the most, um, you know, out of my performance. And, and so, yeah, I got into that, um, won a couple of, of matches. And uh, again, from the, the Wing Chun basic training, I think, I think that also kind of helped to broaden my horizon a bit about the martial arts. And so, um, and then when I got really into the movies, I was like, okay, there's got to be a bit, more to it than just full contact fighting right because m mainly yeah. what we're doing is like a kickboxing style where you, you know you have your basic throws your basic kicks and that's kind of it right but for movies i figured oh wow like at that time i, I remember i saw jet lee and he was doing all this <laughs> crazy uh crazy movements and, and I, yes. I got really interested in like the performing aspect of martial arts which you can find, for example, in wushu, Chinese, Chinese wushu. And, um, and so that kind of hooked me and, and I did a bit of research. And then I found that a lot of people went to the Shaolin Temple to train there. And there was actually an opportunity mm. to travel to China. And so when I was, I think, 14 or 15, um, me and my grandmother, actually, we went uh, on a kind of martial arts trip to China, you know, uh, she took <laughs> care of me. I was, I was still young and, and uh, we were visiting the, uh, visited the Shaolin temple and a lot of schools okay. surrounded by the temple. And, and I, I, you know, when I got there, I trained day and night and I got so excited and I wanted to know everything about the martial arts, you know, the internal, the external styles. And, Actually. and yeah, a year later I went there by myself and stayed there for a couple of months in a, in a Shaolin Kung Fu school. And it was a great time because 
uh, not only did it teach me, you know, some some of the fundamental martial arts, but um, it also taught me the way of of uh, of how people live there. You know, because uh, I remember at that time there was just like a wooden board where we used to sleep and. There was not much. There was um, wow. there was just training, actually. <laughs> you know, <laughs> waking up five thirty or six o'clock in the morning, going for an hour run, then coming back, having your 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 rice soup as a breakfast, and then continuing training till lunch, probably like two hours or three hours. We were training on 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 sand, so the dust would always uh-huh. come up and stuff like that, and. And then, yeah, from there, lunch, and then back to training for another three hours. And then there was dinner no, time. And then sometimes after dinner, we, we still used to train at night. You know, whoever oh. was up for it. Um, sure. And it was cool. It was a total culture clash for me. Like, uh, I've never seen anything like that. And, you know, being surrounded mm-hmm. by the, the Chinese kids and, you know. It was, sure. It's great. It's great. And, um, and when I came back to Germany... Um, I wanted to compete in in what you call wushu, you know, Chinese martial arts, uh, in the in the performing section, not in the fighting section. So okay. I found um, David Turek. He's a, a wushu athlete from Germany. He's actually pretty recognized within the martial arts circle here in Germany. And um, I joined the the Berlin wushu team for quite some time. And then after that, I went to China to uh, study at the Shanghai Sports University. And mm. there's actually a major where you can graduate in, in, in martial arts and, and actually also mo- what, what they call uh, Kung Fu acting. So I joined that program. It was really cool. It was cool. You, wow. you got, yeah, you had like acting classes, martial arts classes, uh, Chinese. And so it was a full program just fascinating you know for people who are interested to do these kind of films yeah but at that time when i went to china uh, i i got the opportunity to to work with uh, jackie chan and yeah and that sort of happened at the same time around 2010 okay uh yeah it's been 12 years and um that uh, I would say I was very fortunate to get the opportunity, and but I, I was also prepared at that time. Um, so yeah, everything kind of led into the direction of wanting to make um, mostly martial arts heavy films. Um, but I always had an interest in directing, acting, and so on. Sorry, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> no, that's that's great, man. I, I love um, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and then the other question was how I got Mortal Kombat, was it? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Mortal Kombat happened for a couple of reasons because, for one, I was working for about ten years, I think, uh, within the stunt industry as a as a stunt man, as a stunt choreographer and um, stunt coordinator right. uh, for the Jackie Chan stunt team, and um, and so that time was really fulfilling in a way that I could learn each and every aspect of okay how do you actually put a fight scene together you know how do you choreograph how do you shoot it how do you edit it how do you perform how do you even teach like some of the actors to to fight and and so yeah um for some reason deep inside me I always had the urge to to become a full-time actor. I wanted to express myself through, not only through physicality and, and doing stunts, but kind of stretch um, my limits by, you know, getting into dramatic roles, characters, you know, doing characters. Yes. And, and so I sometimes refer to it that, uh, you know, in martial arts you have stretching and you try to do get into your splits, you just try to um, increase your range of mobility. And so for me, yeah. acting kind of became that thing where I wanted to increase my range of um, showing emotions or, 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 you know, just be becoming a, a, a good actor. <laughs> or, yeah, well yeah. said. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. Um, and so... And so I always had this dream to to do acting, and um, I remember I was in London uh, at that time, 
looking for an agency and I would always get like a no, a no, a no. And it was kind of frustrating of at that time. Yeah. Because if you don't have anything in the first place to, to show them, um, you, you almost have to be, this industry works kind of weirdly. You almost have to be successful in order that they take you to be even more successful. But if you don't have anything to yeah. show, uh, it's, it's kind of difficult. So what I did was I just shot my own short films and I That's directed right. them, yes. and, you know, acted in them. And then, I, and then slowly over time, I was able to collect more and more footage and I put together a little show reel and stuff like that. And, um, Again, okay, with the Mortal Kombat role, I went to America for the first time because I decided, like, it has to be now or, or never, you know? Like, uh, uh, sure. I just, I think I was probably, like, 28 at that time or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I just bought a ticket. I went to L.A., didn't know anyone, and then um, I, I managed to actually convince... Uh, a manager and and their agency to take me on and um they they must have been impressed or i must have done something wrong to catch their attention because i was talking about to bring back you know the the, the true spirit of martial arts and and to bring back that feeling of you know when like bruce lee fought in enter the dragon and everything was like, oh, so physical and there was no there's no bs it was just him and the camera and he was you know and and i told them like i want to bring back that kind of feeling because that's what got me excited in the first place it wasn't all the cg and stuff like that and i still believe in that today you know the amen for films like mortal Kombat, for example i think the the physicality of the actors have to be in the foreground you know and 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 a scene like a fight scene has to shine through that of course sure. it has to be supported by camera and some kind of effects and but mm -hmm. i'm a strong believer that you know a true martial artist that's what you need for those kind of roles it's like it's really i don't think you can fake it i mean no you know no. you know what i mean so so <laughs> i was giving them that kind of speech <laughs> and, sure. Um, and then yeah, they took me on, and then um, there was this casting for Mortal Kombat. So I auditioned for it. I auditioned for Liu Kang in the beginning, and yeah. <laughs> and luckily that part went to Ludi. I think he did a great job. And so um, again, I was depressed. <laughs> no job, <laughs> no job for me. And oh so, man, yeah. Um, yeah, I was really looking forward to play that character actually, but I think now mm -hmm. it turned out much better that you know the way it is. It all it all came out in the end, my friend. Exactly. So I think around about two months later or so, I I went I was in China at the time. I was again hustling and trying to um, meet new people, and and uh, it was a tough time, you know. And then one night, I remember mm -hmm. I was by myself in a Chinese shopping mall somewhere in Beijing. I was watching a crappy, crappy movie and by myself. And I went out <laughs> of the theater. Uh, it was already late and uh, I checked my phone because it was in flight mode. And um, I checked my phone and there was these, there were these WhatsApp messages popping up, like, call me, yeah. call me right now from my manager. Huh. And then, you know, I called him and he was like, yeah, you, uh, they want you for Kung Lao. And I was like, what? Who's Kung Lao? <laughs> Uh, uh, I wasn't too familiar, to be honest, with Kung Lao. Sure. I was like super excited, like, okay, what is this and why me and what's going on? And then I was just by myself on this empty street at night in Beijing, somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And I was like calling on my friends and screaming into my phone. And I was like, I'm in Mortal of Kombat. Of course. I, like, got super excited. Um, and then I, I right away, I... Uh, I checked on, on Kung Lao, the character, and I was like, wow, that's the guy with the hat. I remember. Yeah. Wow. And um, and then I, yeah, it just so happened. And then got into to preparation right away. And yeah, the rest is kind of history. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant, man. So what are some of your favorite personality traits when it comes to Kung Lao? Or what do you think makes him stand out amongst all the others? Uh, I mean, definitely 
the hat, right? That's so obvious. Yeah, but, <laughs> for sure. Um, there's some coolness about Kong Lao. There's also some mysteriousness uh, about him because mm -hmm. he he doesn't always show and present himself like all the way. He's kind of more, I wouldn't say introverted, but you know, he keeps it quiet until it's necessary to talk. And then, but when yes. he does, you know, it's like a hundred percent, you know? Yeah. And so I always resonated with that kind of character. because I think something of that is also in my own personality. Um, mm. So yeah, um, that and what well, more, I mean, the fighting style course that he uses you know implementing the hat and doing teleportation um his his outfit his costume um it's fantastic the different iterations that i've seen him throughout the game i found quite interesting the way you know the costume was designed and, and yeah, mk3 bond, right here <laughs> yeah that's a cool one actually yeah nice one and and his bond with uh Liu kang i think that creates like this chemistry between brothers you know who came from from the same background you know from Shaolin Temple and yeah yeah, yeah well, well I think it's a it's a it's a badass character I really enjoy <laughs> playing him 100 percent yeah I understand the hat actually went through at least 10 different prototypes before finding the perfect one uh, could you fill us in on this process and what you had to endure um yeah I think probably 10 or, or more prototypes um well when when they cast me they were already in, in prep for the movie so they had worked on the hat and ah. i think when i received that call they were mentioning that i had to fly to new zealand the next week to try on the hat mm. and i didn't know what to think about of that because they just wanted me to you know, go all the way from China to New Zealand just to try on a hat. <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay, oh, let's do it. Um, yeah. And then, so I went to Wellington, where they have these amazing studios. Um, what are they called? Um, I forgot the name, but they did uh, Lord of the Rings and and all of that, the the whole props and everything over there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, I got into into that uh, studio. And then I tried on the hat. They were measuring out, you know, the size, and yeah, it was kind of cool. And um, yeah, um, and then when I got on set the first time, you know, wearing the the actual hat, that that was um, an experience. That was must sweet. have felt great. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any creative input towards the the costume in particular, or make any specific requests for the character that ended up coming to fruition? Um, for the costume, actually, not so much. I mean, our costume designer, mm. Cappy Ireland, she's amazing. Um, she designed all the costumes, and um, and working with her was was so easy, you know. Um, and she she would ask me like oh should we do some uh, changes here and there mainly because of uh, for like uh, fighting reasons like you know sometimes you have to have the ability to move and stretch yeah and so I was telling them <laughs> out of experience that my pants <laughs> need to be stretchy you know because it's oh, the yeah. worst thing if you have tight pants and you have to do a kicks, <laughs> kicks or anything in them it's like rip that doesn't work <laughs> my friend that doesn't work. <laughs> And also, <laughs> I was making sure that the shoes were also light because that's another thing. I know if the shoes are too heavy, it's going to be, uh, it's a nightmare to, mm. to fight in them. And so I was trying to make the costume a bit more fight wearable. Yeah. And it worked out pretty well. Yeah. Except the hat. It was heavy. <laughs> the hat was really heavy. Yeah. And I believe um, for the fight scenes they actually gave you a different one correct yeah i remember we had i think five different hats on set ah but i think one of them was the fight hat which was a bit lighter than mm. uh the other one um so yeah a couple of hats um 
but it was still heavy. It was still heavy, and it's it's not only the the weight; it's also the size of the hat. It's like massive, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I had to be careful on set when I was walking around not to hit anyone when I just oh geez suddenly turn, you know. Oh hey Joe! Oh crap! <laughs> exactly, you know. You have to you have to be careful. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. As we've seen on the Blu-ray, there was an additional scene with Kung Lao. Raiden and Liu Kang yeah. in a garden uh, discussing their next steps. Max, is there by chance anything else that you happen to have filmed but was left on the cutting room floor? Um, for Kung Lao, I know that when we shot in the garden, there was much more than what you can see in the deleted scenes. Oh, we actually, wow. okay, this is a cool story. We did a fight scene in the garden with. Oh! I don't know if I can say this. Okay, anyway, we did a fight scene with Kong Lao and Cole Young to kind of, you know, Kong Lao being sort of his mentor figure, trying to yeah. uh, unleash his Akarna. And um, yeah, we did that scene. And interesting. It ended up not being in the movie, but I thought it was quite, quite a nice scene because. Um, I remember when I was in quarantine going to Australia for the reshoots because that's when we did the scene. Uh, ah. Simon, the director, he was so yes. nice. He was so nice and he asked me um, if I had any ideas for an additional scene with Ko Young and me training him and if I could come up with some sort of uh, uh, ideas for how to use the environment um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, implementing different training tools into the scene. And I was like, yeah, sure, let me think of something. And I got overly excited. I, I wrote a whole <laughs> scene. <laughs> wow. I wrote a whole scene with dialogue and everything. And um, I sent it to him and they kind of ended up taking probably 85% of that. And we were then doing that scene that I wrote, which didn't yeah. end up in the movie, but it was still cool, you know. Damn. Um, because I tried to put as much and give Kung Lao as much um, philosophical lines that yeah. go hand in hand with the philosophy of martial arts. Oh, okay. And it was a bit like, you know, it was a bit like Enter the Dragon, you know, when Bruce Lee talks to that boy. I don't know if you know, yeah, you know that's the right. scene, but you know, you know, look at the moon and yeah, that, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I was a bit inspired by that, but yeah, it's, wow, that's, it's that's, a cool, it's cool behind the scenes story to share. Yeah, thanks for uh, for letting us know about no, that. Sure. I mean, yeah, you were fantastic in the movie, and I thought you played the perfect Kung Lao Max, and, and I, I wish oh, there you. was more screen time with you, you know, thank so you, man. that would have been ideal. Thank you. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, how many takes uh, did it require <laughs> to film the dinner table scene? Uh, did Josh Lawson make you break character at all? Was this one of the more tougher scenes to do? Um, well, first of all, Josh, Josh Lawson, who plays Kano, I think he, he's an amazing, not only actor, but he's just an amazing guy to be around with. He's super fun <laughs> and like... Uh, we had we had a great time. Like every one of us, we were constantly like jiggling and laughing, you know, because uh, <laughs> he he did most of most of the lines that he did was improv. I think I know it's amazing. And so each and every time, like I think every every single take, he just delivered a new line, um, <laughs> and. Yeah, some of them were, were really funny. One time I, I broke out of character, actually. I was like, mm. this is too much. <laughs> that wasn't uh, during the dinner table scene. It was during my, um, you know, when Kung Lao comes in, the introduction scene. And then it moves to yeah. where Sub-Zero and, and uh, uh, help me, uh, Shang Tsung, when they, when they okay, appear yeah. out of the, the, the black... Um, uh, Hole, and then um, yep, Kano was saying something like, uh, "Who are you?" Like, come on, man. I yeah, don't know yeah. what he said, uh, but it was super funny, and, and I 
I remember I broke out his character. <laughs> I think everyone else did, and yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. But yeah, the dinner uh, dinner table scene was was really um, I really enjoyed shooting that. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell you right now, um, amongst the community, we all think that's one of the best scenes in the movie. It was fabulous. Oh wow! Yeah, so good. I think thanks to to Josh, you know, he did an amazing job. It it all just molded together very nicely. Yeah, for sure. exactly. Um, if you could pick or do anything in the MKU, where would you like to see Kung Lao's character? Is there anything in specific that you'd like to explore? Um, you mean like with the next movie or just in general? The- uh, just in general, whether it's a TV show, movie, where uh-huh. would you like to see your character go? Wow, interesting, huh? Um, but... I think in terms of movies, I would love to see Shaolin monks coming to life. Oh, tell me about it. You know, that already exists, yeah. you know, as a game, but as a movie, I think that kind of material would leave so much. It has so much potential to become a, a great film. Uh, Certainly, that that would be my 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 dream project. To be honest, dream come true. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Were you a part of any elaborate onset pranks, or did you have any particular traditions? For example, we all know Ludi Lin was the champion of Thumb Wars, and his room <laughs> often reeked of boiled broccoli. Do you have any funny stories uh, that you'd He's like to share with our audiences? Yeah. <laughs> <A lot of broccoli. laughs> um, um, I actually have a lot of uh, footage that I shot on my iPhone. Probably at some oh. point, I will I will release some of that. Um, Fantastic. But yeah, we did the the thumb war game. Uh, what else? <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, what was quite scary one time was to see myself dead, dead because you know there, there's a scene where Kung Lao dies, and then they they had this uh, they had this puppet of me oh yeah you know and must have been weird and for some reason <laughs> I, I went into like the uh, the props trailer or behind the trailer and there was like yeah. like basically myself lying <laughs> on the floor like covered in blood and I, I was like oh man it's gonna be hard to sleep tonight <laughs> yeah, it was, like, yeah quite shocking you know but uh yeah. Yeah. Um, Must have been weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but we had such a great time. Everyone bonded so well, and it really feels like, you know, I found a new family. It really it seemed really like that. that. Uh, I yeah. think it's thanks to Simon, also the director, that, you know, he created this energy and that got us yeah. all together. And yeah, it was, it was really special. I've never quite experienced something like that. That's wonderful. And in terms of, of Simon, today it's confirmed that he is coming back for the sequel. And he's yeah. fantastic. I can't wait yeah. to see what he does. Yeah, I was so happy when I, I read the news, you know, because I yeah. think Simon, um, you know, this is his, his first feature film. And um, I know that before that he did commercials and. Yes, and for a PlayStation, I think. Yeah. And so the stakes were really high, you know, like. Yes. Having Mortal Kombat uh, as your first film, you know. Um, so I, I think he did an amazing job. I think there's a lot of potential yes. inside him, and we will see great things from him in the future. So I really you support, said support that idea that he'll, he'll continue to direct the Mortal Kombat um, sequel, and hopefully the other films as well. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, out of all the scenes you had filmed in the movie, what would you say is the one that you were most pleased with thematically, visually, and so forth? Uh, you mean uh, scenes where uh, Kung Lao yeah. is, is seen? Or, okay. Yep. Uh, for Kung Lao, it, it's, it's the fatality scene. That was that's quite... <laughs> That was actually an experience in itself because when we shot it, it was we did it um, 
probably 80 percent uh, behind blue screen and so it was mm. kind of abstract and i didn't know how it would turn out um you know because the hat when it was in in, in the sand spinning in the sand that was also cgi yeah. uh, so i had a rough idea like how the scene would look like but um it turned out to be really cool i thought oh yeah like very that was one of the highlights yeah (laughs) i know a lot of people screamed when they saw nitara get split in half (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) including myself (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. uh yeah that was that was that was cool yeah so how about mel jardson uh what are some great memories you have working with her she was fun to work with yeah uh you know great attitude um and yeah, I mean, we we had a quite short scene. Like, I killed her off right away. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but it was a great time, you know. Um, and we were laughing a lot because I was basically sitting on her back. Yeah. Riding <laughs> Nitara. Yeah. So, it's like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious, man. It is. It is. So you were on file to say that Kung Lao had some incredible fatalities in the movie. Notice that's a plural. Besides the epic mm-hmm. Natara one, was there supposed to be something else rather jaw-dropping in the film that didn't get to see the light of day? Um, in terms of fatalities? Yeah. Um, let me think. I think they ended up using all of the fatalities that we filmed, but... Ah. I don't think they had planned any other fatalities. Um, yeah, I think that was everything was pretty much in is in there that yeah that we designed. Okay, interesting. With. Yeah, because yeah. I, I know uh, kind of as you were saying earlier, you know, Lewis Tan said to the public that there's actually a few fight scenes that were cut out of the film completely, which is really a shame. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I think the one I mentioned in, in the Chinese Garden. That one was cut out. Um, yeah, but it's it's been a while since I've seen that film, so I really, I, I, I truly, I, honestly, I don't know like which other yeah, scene yeah. would have been in there. Origi- fight scenes. Originally, yeah. they were talking about filming a fight scene with rain when they jump out of the airplane, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I believe they scrapped that out completely because of budget reasons, maybe. But yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but it's it's okay. I think you know, save up rain for later yeah give him more exactly you know and and yeah i know that um i think the end fight was probably what louis was talking about um that was much longer oh wow okay so i think louis had louis had much more fighting in that one um but yeah for some reason they cut it a bit shorter yeah to to fit the story yeah um, have you ever, by chance, played Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks? I know you brought it up earlier. Uh, what's your opinion? Uh, yeah. I've never if played you... <laughs> I've never Oh, played. wow. No, you haven't, eh? No, because... Okay. It's not because of Mortal Kombat. It's, I, I'm not a, a huge gamer. Like, I ah. I can't remember when I last touched a PlayStation. Like, I know I did for Mortal Kombat and, like... Yeah. In practice, like, and MK11. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The latest one, right? Yeah. But I haven't played. I haven't played Shaolin Monks. What a shame! Because man, you you took some things I could tell straight out of MK11, and to me, it almost felt though uh, some things from Deadly Alliance as well. Um, you really um, did a great job there, Max. Thank you, man. Thank you. Well, uh, nowadays it's so easy to go online and do your research and look up all the stuff that is out there, you know, about the characters. So. Mm-hmm. I just collected like a couple of things that I thought would be interesting because I I wanted to give him uh, a certain physicality, like yes, uh, certain characteristic moves that uh, would make him special, I guess, uh, yeah. and support his his character. And so I found bits and pieces that I thought, oh, that's that's pretty cool. Like, let's, let's put that in. Um, and in the end, it was a subconscious choice, I think. But yeah, there, there's actually, there's much more that you can, 
you could do, you know, in terms of movement, because the library oh, yeah. is, is, is huge, you know. Uh, yes. We haven't used probably 70% of Kung Lao's movements. Like, there's so much to <laughs> exactly. discover, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I must say that uh, that character helped me so much because normally if you if you play a a real life character he 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 maybe knows how to fight you know but in the end it's just like punching and kicking you know but um with with mm -hmm. kung lao because of the hat because of his special abilities it leaves room to to so much more to elaborate you know the fight scenes and that's what i love Precisely. about Mortal, Mortal Kombat. you know that you you're you're able to do all of that yeah mm -hmm. now previously you also mentioned um Hopefully, uh, Simon can go on to do multiple movies. Uh, Joe Taslam has admitted, uh, I think he said uh, to maybe a five-picture uh, contract. Um, I think you've confirmed as well, correct, that you are also signed on for a contract, are you not? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about... Um... To be honest, I, I would love to share with you, but I don't know anything about the sequel, who's going to be involved. Like, I think having uh, the things that you've heard too, like having Jeremy Slater, you know, the writer yes. attached to it. I think that's that's a great move. I read yesterday that uh, Ed Boon and John Tobias, they're, they're included as well as um, being part of the writer's team. And so... That's, That's amazing. amazing. They, they, you're, you're right at the source with those kind of people, you know? I mean, they created the show. Who, who would know yes. better than them? Exactly. So, uh, Todd the Garner movie. just just posted, uh, Ed Boon is the best. That's my tweet. Just wanted to say that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm excited what they will come up with. Whether or not, um, I mean, whether or not Kong Lao is going to be in there or not. Um, of course, I would wish for it. But yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> but overall, I just wish the movie a lot of success because yes. the fans, you know, I'm someone who, who reads all the comments and I really try to listen to ah. the fans because we're making a movie for them, you know? Yeah. And so I think uh, the least we can do is just to open our ears and to just take in everything and take in the criticism as well as the good things that we did on the first one and just learn from mistakes that you know, you've made and adapt do, yeah. adapt and the next one will be better so i think yes and that's why i i love also interacting with the fans it's it's pretty special mm -hmm. some of them wow. are giving amazing input and they're probably not realizing but i think oh. creators producers writers do i think most of them i think are are reading that stuff um from the hardcore fans and taking that in um and sometimes even incorporating that into their writing so mm, yeah. yeah for you guys out there you're not doing that for for nothing you know it, it always creates some um, uh, a new wave of, of fresh ideas and i think it's it's cool that we can learn and learn from the fans and cooperate with them and yeah Man, thank you so much for saying that. Yeah, that really, really comes a long way. It means a lot. And, you know, it's, it's, we're really blessed, the Mortal Kombat community, to, um, you know, have you guys and, you know, Todd Garner, uh, you know, uh, as a, you know, a big part of, the, of this movie because, yes, he's very interactive as well. And uh, he loves to hear, you know, you know, the opinions and advice and things like this. And, um, you know, the first movie, was so incredibly successful. If I'm not mistaken, it was the number one most streamed movie on HBO Max mm -hmm. of that year. So, you know, that alone, you know, there's so much potential. And, uh, you know, if this sequel explodes, like you're saying, it's going to be amazing to see where it goes to. I think so, too. I think so, too. I think a couple, like, this is just my personal take, right? But a sure. couple of ingredients in terms of the action that I've read, um, that I've read about, where, where I think people are right 
is to 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 show it as clearly as possible and not you know getting around with fancy editing and stuff like that yeah the quick cuts yeah the yeah. quick cuts um yeah that's what i would love to see like actually that's what i love about the first film is uh i mean the 21 film is the that opening sequence because oh that was amazing yeah yes. it's amazing it's oh it's what i I'm, i'm using bruce lee's words here but it's like emotional content you know it's based yeah. on hanzo's family getting murdered and you feel for the character you know you feel oh. you there's a why for the fighting you know there's a there's yes. a reason for the fighting and and therefore there's so much emotional content going on and and i, I just love that scene i i think i think it's a great yes. scene i got goosebumps when i saw it and me too i think the way it was filmed it's it's clean you can see both guys going at each other like you know full full time and yeah I yes really, really love that I scene. highly agree um you know Simon did such a spectacular job and I was very very happy that uh, they released that first you know 10 15 minutes to the world before the movie even came out yeah. and uh, it really struck a note and you know speaking of notes the music was lovely it it, it suited it so well yeah, as well yeah so. I think uh, yeah Benjamin Benjamin Wolfish yes did yes a great job each and every department they worked so hard I know it because I was there and um, they did it with, with compassion and with love you know um yeah the art department the way they would decorate and, and create the set um even though we shot a lot of things on location outside but uh, like for example the japanese house in in the in the opening scene that was all created by mm. by them um just especially yeah. for the film and you know you can see it within the details it's like It's amazing. It's perfect. As if you could live Certainly. there. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah. And the costumes. Yeah. Oh my god, I think the costumes are great. Ah. The music. Agreed. And like I said, you know, we, we have to learn from a couple of mistakes we made and come back yeah. stronger. And yeah. eventually, you know, the sequel will will be another hit, you know, even better. I have faith. I have faith. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Max, I would really like to hear your thoughts on other portrayals of Kung Lao in the past. Did you happen to have a conversation with the original Anthony Marquez? And lastly, have you ever seen Paolo Montalban in the spectacular TV show Mortal Kombat Conquest? Yeah, yeah, I have. Um, and even uh, Mark de Gascos was portraying Kong Lao yeah, at some point. That's right. Yeah, so yes. yeah, I, I, I was watching all of their performances. I thought they all did an amazing job. And I even talked to oh. Anthony Marquez over in Facebook or, or Instagram. Oh, nice. We just had a brief chat and he wished me all the best, you know, and I thought, you know, that's nice. You know, having, oh, certainly. having um, that generation before me, you know, give me support and So I think he's a, great, blessing, yeah. he's a great guy and very skilled and talented. So, yeah. So yeah, we're just standing off shoulders of giants, as, as we used to say. Right? <laughs> so um, yeah, and then um, that more combat conquest. I saw that show uh, bits and pieces of the show. Um, Excellent. Um, I thought the the actor. What was his name again? Uh, Paolo Montalban. Uh, Paolo, right? Yeah, he yeah. he did an amazing job too. I think he's not even yes. a martial artist, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know what? Uh, he started as a dancer. That was kind of his yeah. profession. But it, as you watch the show, about halfway, because of his movements and such, he actually got more incorporated with the uh, martial arts. Oh, cool. He started doing a lot of his own stuff. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he was amazing and yeah. he did a great job. And, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, um, Mark de Gascos as well. You know, shout, yes. out, shout out to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, 
How honored are you to be a part of the Jackie Chan stunt crew? Uh, what are some of the biggest highlights being a part of this crew? You've also said before that uh, you've had some near-death experiences. Uh, could you elaborate more on this, or <laughs> is this something you'd prefer to avoid at this time? Um, no, I think right now, looking back, it's cool talking about it. <laughs> uh, okay. But yeah, for, yeah I'm, I'm, first of all, yeah, I'm... I feel very honored to be part of this team. Um, Jackie, Jackie Chen, we, we call him Dago, which is uh, translated in English as a uh, Chinese brother. Uh, ah. Not Chinese, but big brother, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, big brother, okay. So in Chinese, it's translated as big brother. And um, he, he is a big brother, you know, he, he, he is a big brother, not only to the JC stunt team, but to each and every one he works with and you can really feel that on on a set of a Jackie Chan movie it's amazing uh, he takes so good, good care of people um, wow. and I mean I was watching him since I was so like a kid and <laughs> like then suddenly standing behind beside him and, and working with him it's just a dream come true and and so I'm really, really honored and, and blessed to be part of that team. And yeah, I had some great experiences, like a growing, growing not only as a stuntman but as a as an individual as well. Because he he really emphasizes on teaching people how to be a good person, you know. Um, yeah. So sometimes on set it would be a bit rushed, or people would start to uh, treat other people badly because of hierarchy, you know, because of the system. Oh, sure. And he, he's always watching. He's always watching and he, he, he always makes sure that everyone gets treated uh, equally and is being taken Good. care of. And, and so I try to really take that in and, and use it when I'm, you know, doing movies by myself. Um, so, so yeah, um, wow. some near death experience. Well, mm -hmm. I uh, did. Uh, we did a movie called uh, Skip Trace, and we shot it in, in in mainland China and also in Hong Kong. And I was in the water at one point, doubling for uh, uh, Johnny Knoxville. Oh yeah, yeah. By the way nicest guy ever shout out to Johnny <laughs> super nice nice guy and great actor and uh, yeah um, I got the honor to double for him and do a scene in a river uh, where me myself and uh, uh, Jackie's uh, double we would go down a river and apparently I was getting under uh, the the water and I yeah uh, I, I was um, swallowing a lot of water and I almost couldn't get out. So that was, yeah, that almost ended up uh, as a fatality. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's scary, man. Yeah. But there were other things, but that's that's the the, the life of a stunt person. You know, you got to take the risk. Well, that's <laughs> um, true. That's true, man. So, yeah. Uh, uh, you released a fantastic single called Flawless Victory, obviously somewhat influenced by Mortal Kombat. Your mother is a vocal coach. I think your dad is a musical conductor. Yeah. So therefore, it is no surprise you also excel in this field. <laughs> but what I want to know about today is uh, your high school experience of having your own rock band. Uh, what uh -huh. are some of the greatest experiences or memories during this ordeal? Um, that's a cool <laughs> question. Yeah, I, I, um, I always loved music. And like you said, I've always been surrounded by music. Even my brother, my younger brother, he's doing music as well. And, ah. um, but he's also working in stunts as a stunt coordinator. But you know. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, his name is Lee Huang. L-E-E -E okay. Huang. Like my last name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can find him on Instagram. And, um, yeah, we as kids, you know, we started out uh, singing songs. I've always been a huge fan of 
Elvis Presley and you know those oh, yeah. 50, 60 kind of rock songs and and that <laughs> thing led to another and you know in high school I found some friends who then they already had a band and they were asking me hey, don't you want to join and I tried out and <laughs> I think it was enough it was enough for what they asked for and so we you know created this group and uh, what'd you um, call it we called it we had different names for it uh in the beginning it, it was called vio v-i-o for whatever okay. reason i think there, there was no reason <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the band leader my friend just came up with that name we're like okay let's take it and then later sure. we renamed ourselves into bullet stars ah again i don't know why <laughs> Just found it fresh and cool at the time. And then yeah. we we always would meet up, I think, during the weekends and, you know, jam and create new songs. And I, re I remember I, I was uh, I was singing and then they would always uh, turn up the, the bass and the guitar so loud that they couldn't hear me any anymore just on purpose to... Let me, oh, get me pissed what characters like, guys, what characters guys we want to make mu uh, music here what are you doing and they're like mm -hmm. <laughs> oh and yeah we played a couple of concerts and and recorded a couple of albums actually and then uh is there anywhere online where we can access this i think there still is yeah it's a long time ago so is it on itunes or no, it's not even on iTunes. It must be on okay. YouTube. I can send you the link. Ba Bandcamp or whatever. Maybe they will all become hits right now, you know, after. So. Yes, let's make it happen. <laughs> let's know. make it happen. But yeah, I'm, I'm still super into music and I sing every day. I, I, I compose songs from time to time. Nice. Uh, I think I'm going to release a, a single that I recorded in, in Chinese. It was a Chinese. Oh. Actually, it's a, it's a ballad love song. And, oh, um, brilliant. Yeah, I was experimenting at that time with, with Chinese songs. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm going to release that uh, anytime soon. Wow. Uh, and then music is just something like a way to release my, my energy and my emotions just to feel better. Um, oh, it's fantastic! Yeah, I, I sing myself. It's 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 so great. I was about to ask because you have that rock vibe that comes. With oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I like alternative rock, uh, punk rock, post hardcore. I love all that stuff, my friend. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. 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 Awesome! I would love to hear something from you one day. Oh, cool! Hey. Yeah, sure. We'll keep in touch. And I, I, I seriously can't wait to listen to some of your material uh, from the old band. Uh, sorry, what type of uh, music is it? Like, what's... Uh, we, I think, what was it called? N new Metal? Oh, New Metal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so I, I always get confused with those different uh, names. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot <laughs> of them. I have no idea. <laughs> Grunge? What is Grunge, it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah we just did our own stuff i think it became its own thing <laughs> oh wow but yeah i think it was cool. so so kind of like a mix of of a bunch of different styles I makes think me think of this one kind of uh, underground band they're called family force five they have all kinds of different like okay. styles of music in there yeah oh interesting i have to look that yeah. up yeah yeah um yeah i think it was leaned towards at that time papa roach and, oh, and a little yeah, bit they're Lincoln brilliant. Park. yeah Lincoln yep. Park, yes. Lincoln plays a huge because I also life, used man. to play the yeah. keyboard, and you know that yeah, that you can play the Mortal Kombat theme song. <laughs> it's so funny. I I recorded the Mortal Kombat theme song. Uh, you know, I was playing it on my piano. I haven't released it yet because I thought like maybe that's a bit too much. Oh hell no, <laughs> Max! Come on, uh, make it happen, man. We'd all love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe at some point I'll show it to you. Guys. Okay, cool, <laughs> cool. Uh, so, Max, we're now going to jump to uh, the last segment of the show, which is okay. called Final Round. And so, what we're going to do in this final round is just ask you a few quick questions, try to get to know you a little more. So, 
All right. The first question being, what are some of your secret talents? Um, drawing. Maybe not. Oh, okay. You draw. Excellent. Uh, I think I've exposed my talents already to you guys. <laughs> <sighs> uh, what are some things you draw, man? I used to draw when I was a kid, so I'm actually not sure if I can still do it. <laughs> but I just say that. Maybe secret drawing, talent. Drawing is a major talent of mine. And uh, I'm the Da Vinci of the new age. Yeah. Yep, it's it's <clears> true. It's just it's just hidden. <laughs> He's got to get back at it and it'll be a thing. I love it. <laughs> what kind of things would you like to draw, you think? Uh, Kong Lao's back. <laughs> that is the answer I was looking for. Okay. Well, well I have done. no well idea. Done. I will draw some birds. <laughs> uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? I think it would be teleportation. Oh, in the Kung Lao spirit. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. And also, Good. I would use that also to go and travel different places. To, That'd be so convenient. You know, skip skip the flying, skip the train. Yeah, all that nauseating stuff, exactly. long wait. Exactly. Um, skip what is your What is your number one favorite movie to watch? Oh, this question. Wow. <laughs> Too many. Too many. I don't okay, know. what are um, say your top three or something? I have no idea, but I would just <laughs> name a few. Um, Goodfellas. Classic. Um, uh, I, I really love uh, SPL. It's a it's a Hong Kong film. It's a fight movie nice. with Donnie Yen. I think that one is amazing oh, in terms of martial arts and the whole visuals. Uh, gets me every time. I watched it over 10 times, I think. So, love it. Donnie Yen. I want him to play Fujin. What do you think of that? But yeah, I, I think he would fit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He yeah, would I definitely fit into the MK universe. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the question with movies, I mean, you got to be more specific. I'm sorry. I don't know. Oh, it's all good, my friend. That That's a good answer. <laughs> good answer. Um, what was your very first job ever? As far as I remember, I worked at a bookstore once I got out of oh. college, uh, high school. And it was just across where we live here in Nuremberg in a shopping mall. Oh, yeah. And I worked there for, I think, two months after high school before... I got my first paid job uh, as a stuntman in German television. And then I had to tell them, sorry, guys, I got to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hate to break the news, I'm but... I'm doing you movies see. now. They're like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, that was my first job, I think. Okay. Okay. Um, what is your favorite food? Uh... Right now, I'm really into Pad Thai, Thailand food, the noodles. Pad Thai is a dish. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I love steak. I'm a meat eater. Oh, can't go wrong. I know yeah. some people oh, don't want to hear that. But yeah, Ludi wouldn't want to hear that. He, he wouldn't want to hear that. <laughs> his, his broccoli would get real mad at me. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm into meat. I'm into steak. Love a good steak. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't think that will change anytime soon. No. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm going to the Italy best right place. Now. Oh, I'm going okay. to Italy with my, my brother and my, my dad. It's going to be a, a boy's oh. trip. And yeah. we're going to have some spaghetti and some pizza for sure. Oh, some that's ice cream. granted. Yeah. Tiramisu. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. I love Italian food. I like it. Um, what is your guilty pleasure? Besides eating juicy steak, <laughs> um, I don't know. I uh, I like to stay at home by myself, watch Netflix. 
Oh, that's that's good. And eat, eat some <laughs> some crappy food from time to time and enjoy a good a good show. You are, that's my. That's, you always got to treat yourself. That's man. my you pleasure. But for most yeah. of the time, I try to eat clean and work out and stay healthy. You know, but yeah, from time to time. Gotta, There's got to be that cheat day. Got to be that cheat day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and and finally, Max, tell us a funny story uh, about yourself or something that will always uh, remain a highlight in from your life. Yeah, it's not a highlight, but this just pops into my mind. It's really embarrassing. When I was in school, <laughs> I remember this one day. Everyone in class said, "Okay, goodbye, goodbye." After the end of the day, and we all went yeah. home and the next day I went back to school but no one was there and apparently it was the summer holidays and I just didn't know about it I was like oh. in my own world I showed up to school there was no one there oh my god I'm like um what is this <laughs> <laughs> what's going on and, and, uh, it was so embarrassing oh man yeah that's something that you won't forget <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was yeah. so obvious I'll, that the holidays, th this was the last day before the holidays, and everyone said goodbye to each other, but I was the only yeah. one to not get it. I would still come <laughs> the next day. <laughs> that's, oh my God. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's. All right. Yeah. That's one. Well, story. this has been a lot of fun. Uh, and I definitely learned some new things today, uh, as I'm sure much of our audience has. Before we go today, Max, uh, for all the people listening to today's feature, which social media outlets uh, can we find you at? And is there any particular project or event that you'd like to promote at this time? Um, yep, my social medias. Uh, mostly I'm on Instagram. You know, um, it's uh, Max Huang Official. You can find me on there. I'm on Twitter, the Max Huang, and um, on Facebook with the same name. And uh, yeah, okay. those three platforms that I use. Um, right now, uh, I'm not promoting anything new at this time, but um, it's going to be some quite exciting projects I'm looking forward to. So stay tuned for more. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. Awesome, awesome. And uh, let's look out for that single. <laughs> uh, which one? Uh, the new one? Or the uh, the Chinese one? Yeah. 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 I have to release that one. Sure. Can't wait. Can't <laughs> wait. Looking, looking forward to your song. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you again. And uh, yeah, it's been a blast. And I look forward to speaking with you again shortly. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me and wishing you all the best. Fantastic. We've now come to the concluding point of this episode. With the second Mortal Kombat movie on the horizon, who knows? We may even see Max return in a cameo or perhaps more. Thank you very much for tuning in, my friends. It's been a delight, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say about today's special. Personally, I'm a big fan of this MKU idea, and I'm excited to see how many pathways will open up after this upcoming sequel. As per usual, we're pleased to say that we still have a lot more in store for you. Stay tuned, keep your eyes peeled, and I'm sure you'll be most satisfied with our next episode. Much love, Kamadugu fam. I'll see you in the next one. You know the deal. Have fun, stay safe, and stay flawless.